Welcome in to Views from the Sidelines. I'm your host, Joey Tyson, my partner, Malik Hill. And uh, we're already at the end of September. We're moving into October. We're getting into spooky season. This might have been the strangest September of football I've ever seen. The start of college football and the NFL has just been all over the place. Yeah, it's been wild. But it's been really entertaining, though. It's been fun. Uh, not so fun for our pockets, for those of us that uh, do sports betting. But um, Yeah, I hit on one. And Another one coming soon. Congratulations. I am not I, a degenerate, I, I swear. <laughs> I swear. Yeah, we're on a budget, so small bets yeah, here little, and there. Little, but little bets. Yeah, it's been hard to predict. Things have been crazy. Um, so let's get right into college football, and then we'll get into the NFL. Not too many other sporting news. Um, there's rumors swirling around in the NBA, but nothing nothing serious enough to talk about, I would Just say. Just little media days things. Yeah. Um, so college football, like we said, Another kind of crazy week, but we got into more uh, conference play. So things have heated up for both Michigan and Michigan State. But first, I just want to talk about some of the other uh, games that went on this past weekend. Um, we had Clemson and Wake Forest going to double overtime where Clemson beat Wake Forest 51-45. to Kind of a crazy game. Um, Central Michigan hung on uh, to Penn State for about a half. That was kind of interesting, kind of uh, fun to watch. Um Baylor beat out Iowa State 31-24. Tennessee beat Florida 38-33. to So, as you can see already this week, games were a lot closer yeah. with uh, conference rivals and things like that. Second time Florida has beaten Tennessee. I mean, Tennessee has beaten Florida in the past 17 years. Some real Michigan-Ohio State vibes going on there. Yeah. I'm happy for Tennessee. Uh, Texas Tech took down Texas. Horns down. Their season is looking rough now. If they can get Quinn Ewers back, if they can still have a quality season, they still could have a decent season with Hudson Card, but they just keep being Texas. Yeah, they they keep doing it to themselves. Uh, the upset of the week, no, it's not Appalachian State. Their run is over. Um, Middle Tennessee State, and we're not talking about their basketball team. This is their football team. Beat Miami. They didn't. They didn't just beat them. They beat the brakes off. They forty five. They ran it up. On Miami, 31. they looked like <laughs> they looked like Tennessee versus Miami. Like it was, it's it's hard to explain. It's almost impossible to explain what happened in that game. Yeah, because Mario Cristobal was supposed to bring some tough. Even though it's his first year, he was supposed to bring some toughness to this defense that has some talent, and they look awful. Mm-hmm. Tyler Van Dyke was newcomer of the year in the ACC last year. Only played eight or nine games and just lit it up. NFL uh, draft prospect coming into the season. Mario Cristobal really might be the quarterback killer because Tyler Van Dyke looks like a bum. Mm -hmm. He had to get benched against MTSU because he just looked terrible. And Josh Gaddis, (laughs) the man that won the Broyles Award last year for top coordinator, which I still don't understand. Because Mike McDonald honestly should have won it. But cool that both of them were in contention. Gaddis won. My favorite stat line from this game, uh, a guy named DJ English Chrisom. Two catches, 169 yards, two touchdowns. Yeah, he, he had like a 98-yard touchdown pass from the goal line. 98 was, and 71. Miami averaged 1.6 yards per run. Uh, the only bright spot in the game for Miami was when they brought in Jake Garcia who's a highly recruited freshman quarterback. He came in, he gave them a little bit of, I wouldn't even, <laughs> do you say positivity? I mean, he, he made something happen, I guess, Yeah. in like garbage time. Mm-hmm. But there, there are no, there's no upsides to this with Miami. It's, it's just embarrassing. Yeah. Along with the fact that they barely get like half, they barely fill up half the stadium for their games. Yeah. It's, yeah, it's sad. Just sad affairs in Miami right now. Hopefully Mario can get it back on track because, yeah, it's not good. Yeah. Uh, Oregon beat Washington State 44-41. This that game was, was cl- absurd. That was a close game. Oregon scored yeah. real late in the game. They were down. 
I think it was like 34 to like 21 at the start of the fourth. Something like that. Uh, Oregon had to score or like 34 17, something like that. Oregon scored 29 in the fourth quarter. Yeah, it was nuts. So tough ridiculous. loss for Washington State, but they're three and one. Talented quarterback, new coach. They'll be all right. Uh, Kentucky beat Northern Illinois 31 23. Pretty good game. Uh, Texas A&M beat Arkansas 23 21. Arkansas should have won, but they blew it. That happens. Even with the bad luck field goal bouncing off the top of the upright. Alabama blew out Vandy, no big deal. Ohio State blew out Wisconsin. No it wasn't even deal. it was it wasn't closer. I mean it was it wasn't as close as the score indicates. Yeah. It was like it should have been like fifty two to seven. But they just took the their foot off the gas in the last like yeah, fourth quarter. Uh it's now official Kansas State owns Oklahoma forty one. Three out of four years. And crazy Adrian, Adrian Martinez. Martinez. Eight. He had a heck of a game. The game haven't, of his life. Haven't seen that from him. Since his freshman years, yeah, honestly. <laughs> since the beginning. Uh, four touchdowns on the ground. Uh, just crazy. USC beat Oregon State 17-14. Uh, BYU over Wyoming. Uh, Utah, Washington, they got their wins. So, pretty crazy overall. Um, rankings obviously changed quite a bit. Um, at least towards the bottom, Oklahoma fell all the way to 18. Arkansas falls all the way to 20 from 10. Uh, Minnesota joins the rankings. We'll talk about that in a little bit. Kansas State also joins uh, the ranks along with Florida State. Rank Kansas, you cowards. <laughs> that is the battling the battle cry of every college football fan in America right now. They're 4-0 with two road wins. Mm-hmm. This is Kansas. They 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 gotta they gotta step up and do us right. Yeah. Eventually, like they they can't wait till Kansas is six and zero, oh, because that's not gonna happen. <laughs> we just hope they can get to six wins and make a bowl. But then being four and zero oh is incredible, and Jalen Daniels is almost a Heisman candidate because he's playing out of his mind right now. Yeah. Also, Syracuse is four and zero. Oh. I think they yeah. almost got in the top twenty five too. I think they are in the what is the coaches poll. Yeah, I think they're I 25 think in the coaches poll. Yeah. Um, all right. We'll talk about it. Michigan State. They played Minnesota. And they looked just as bad as they did against Washington, if not worse. It was worse. <laughs> and some some would say this is the worst loss of Mel Tucker's time so far. Yeah, I definitely think it could be. Uh we did say going into the week Minnesota does look like they're improved this year. They're kind of back a little bit. Um, but it's now, now it's hard to judge because Michigan State's just so bad. I don't know. Like, did I jinx Peyton Thorne? Because that's what I'm starting to feel like. Again, at the beginning of the season, I said he could be the second-best quarterback in the Big Ten. And he's looked, dare I say, bad. I feel like I can't put a whole lot on him. Because they they need him to be a quarterback that he's not. And that's not Peyton Thorne's fault. He's not supposed to be running around trying to be like Johnny Manziel. Mm -hmm. He's not supposed to be Joe Burrow. He's supposed to be a high-level game manager. Mm -hmm. A guy that hits the big throws when they need him to. A guy that can scramble and slide and make smart decisions. That's the type of quarterback they need Peyton Thorne to be. Mm -hmm. But they won't allow him to be that. So this is the Peyton Thorne you get right now. Would you agree with that? Yeah, I, I see what you're saying. Um, it, it almost seems like he's like, and it could be somewhat the team, but it could be himself as well, you know, forcing the issue because, I mean, they they can't play defense, so they're always down. So then it feels like he's got to be the hero, I guess. Yeah. Um, But, like, my biggest problem, you got Jaden Reed back in this game. He had four catches for 21 yards. Keon Coleman had four for 25. Like, they are not... They couldn't establish anything. They are not doing anything down the field. Like, there were no... The, the biggest play that they had was the touchdown pass to Jeremy Bernard. Cool. Like... And that was Noah Kim. Yeah. Who... 
Michigan, the Michigan State fans are like screaming for him like this, like he's going to change what this team is. No. I think they're, why do you want to set him up for failure? Mm-hmm. I, I don't know why they want that. I understand wanting a different look than Peyton Thorne, but he's the best you have right now. Mm-hmm. Noah Kim would kind of be just like throwing the white tile after four games. Yeah. And I, I'm not sure if they should do that. Yeah. Maybe after this game, uh, this <laughs> week, but I don't know. I, I don't really know how to analyze it because like their defense just cannot stop anybody. Minnesota got to do whatever they wanted. Tanner Morgan was 23 of 26, which again, yes, we've said he's, you know, he's looking good again. Mo Ibrahim is one of the better running backs. And they just like, they can't stop anybody from anywhere. Even their front seven didn't, they didn't do anything in this game. Their secondary got torched. Like, what, what do you do? Here's, I, I don't know if you heard this. This is a quote that kind of shows where Mel Tucker is, he's making obvious mistakes that shouldn't be, that he shouldn't be making. After the game, Jacoby Winman was interviewed, the line, their best player on defense, the linebacker. Mm-hmm. And he said that they weren't prepared for what Minnesota did because they expected them to just fully like embrace the run and try to bully them. Now, are you saying I, that, are you, are they trying to but to me, I hate to interrupt. No problem. Tanner Morgan only threw the ball 26 times. It's not like they're airing it out some air raid offense. 268 yards in the air, three touchdowns. Yeah, sure, three touchdowns came in the passing game but like they still pounded the rock they ran it 48 times for 240 yards so what is what are we talking here's, about his why are you not prepared for a team to attack your secondary that sounds like such a balanced why? offense i wasn't prepared we weren't prepared we weren't for prepared. a balanced offense that, what <laughs> i'm glad i didn't hear that Jeez. this what like if mel tucker keeps scotty hazelton after this season, this might be D'Antonio part two, mm-hmm. where I'm going to reshuffle my guys and I don't care about you fans. I'm keeping my guys. Mm-hmm. I really hope it's not like that because they brought him in to recruit like a high level dude and to have coaches around him and to coach like a high level coach. Mm-hmm. You can't have your players after games <laughs> saying we weren't prepared for a passing game. Yeah. That's not even that what? crazy. <laughs> That's not that We weren't crazy. prepared for Tanner Morgan. Yeah. That that's yeah, that's that's just unacceptable. Which yes, Tanner Morgan has is, He's experienced. He's struggled, but he's he's been in big games. Yes. Uh he knows how to play the position when he's healthy. You gotta be ready for Tanner Morgan. <laughs> the other problem I have too is like it, it goes back to what I said before where when Michigan State can't run the ball, it's like they don't know what to do. Yeah. And again, I still feel like their passing game should be more effective. And I, I know their offensive line is a struggle, so, like, that's part of it. But, like, go to four wide and just do these different, like, have a – it's 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 simple. Like, run almost a pro-style offense. Send a couple guys slants, a couple guys deep. You got Keon Coleman, Jaden Reed, two really good deep ball threats. And then have a couple guys crossers over the middle or something like that. Space them out. Listen. Last year, Kenneth Walker was the driving force. But that passing game was creative, wasn't it? Yes. It was very creative when they had to do it. Exactly. That's why I thought they would be fine this year. Because, sure, the running backs are good. They're not Kenneth Walker good, but they should be able to hold their own. But when they get into the problem areas, they have good receivers. They have a good quarterback. Or so I thought. I, It's still up in the air at this point. But I, I don't know. I don't know. Where is the play? Like, what is happening with the play calling in general, defensive side and offensive side? It's just like there's no creativity at all. It's like they come in with a play sheet, and that's the, that's what they stick with. Yeah, that's almost what it seems like. It's like they don't have enough options or something. Like, oh, this isn't working. Let's go to Plan B. Okay, Plan B isn't working. Let's go to Plan Plan C. Well, Plan C didn't work. Maybe we go back to Plan A. See if that works again. Like. Come on. I don't know. It's frustrating to watch, um, for sure. 
this game at Maryland is gonna really tell you what the season. Well, I already think, is from this point on. Like I said, I already think their season's over. Uh, now, granted, yes, they can make a bowl game and whatnot, but as far as what Michigan State fans were probably expecting, you're not going to get that. Now, I also didn't expect to have another like ten and two, eleven and two season. I said uh, nine at the most, probably eight, but seven at the least. That's it, what I thought. If they six lose, and six could be possible. If, if they're if they're losing to Maryland and stuff, like, it's going to get scary real fast. I'll tell you that much. Um. And the way that Maryland played against Michigan, I, I don't see Michigan State beating this team, unless they, you know, they pull something out of their hats and they they figure it out. But they got Maryland, they got to go to Maryland, then they get Ohio State at home. Have fun with that one. Uh, they should be able to beat Wisconsin, I would hope, but I don't know. Is it point. at home? Yes. Okay. That's in East Lansing. Braylon Allen might run run wild. Graham Mertz is worse than yeah <laughs> than Michigan State's quarterback. And now so. and then they of course go to Michigan, which I, I'll give it to them. They always have a chance. Yeah, that's an emotional game. You throw the records out. Yeah. Although Michigan will be a heavy favorite most likely. And yeah. They got to travel to Illinois. That'll be a tough one. It should be should like beginning of the season should be a win, but uh, it's not looking like it right now. Rutgers is three and one. Indiana's three and one. You should beat them. You should. <laughs> you should. But I'm sca- I'm starting to get skeptical. You lo- Michigan State loses to Indiana. Indiana is horrible right now. <laughs> they're 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 bad. Yeah. At least Rutgers has a good defense. Yeah. Anyway, enough of Michigan State. We'll see what they do against Maryland. Hopefully, they can start to figure it out. But uh. They're not going to have a miracle season this year because they have to win out. And if they beat Ohio State, I'll – I don't know. We'll talk about that. Um. Anyway, Michigan, they got it done against Maryland this past week. Um, they were tested for a while. It, it looked a little spooky. I'm sure you were a little nervous. Malik, what do you, uh, what do you got in this game? This was a game of growing pains. And – I don't know how many Michigan fans fully expected it. The ones that didn't expect it are the ones that are insane. <laughs> and the Michigan fans that most people hate, most likely. J.J. McCarthy, it was his first Big Ten start. The very first one. Yes, it was at home. Yes, it was against Maryland, who's a average to below average Big Ten team. Maryland has gotten better. They have a good quarterback and a very underrated receiving core. And good running backs. And they came in with an excellent defensive game plan. JJ looked like he he had some nerves. Mm-hmm. He could never get fully comfortable. He was running around so much. They had to lean on Blake Corm. They had to, they had to put it on his soldiers shoulders. And luckily, he's one of the best backs in the country. So he went for thirty carries, two hundred forty three yards, and two touchdowns. He now leads the nation in touchdowns. On the ground. Yeah, and he's top five in yards, so he if he keeps this up, he's going to have a monster season. But, yeah, defense was inconsistent. J.J. was inconsistent. The play calling, that was the part that annoyed me more than anything because Blake Corum was working, but then they started going to, like, the same just dive up the middle play and it started getting jammed. Yeah, the co-offensive coordinator thing, because Jim Harbaugh is so weird making decisions, I just – I'm used to it at this point. Co-offensive coordinators isn't normal. You usually have one guy that calls plays, one guy that makes the decisions. They won't tell you exactly who it is. They just say it's both of them. But, yeah, this is one where you just had to you had to win. Just pull out the win. With with all the they, – they faced adversity for the first time this season. And I'm happy that they were, they were able to – face adversity and they just didn't walk through Maryland because they might have walked into the Iowa game thinking they were hot hot stuff Mm -hmm. and now they have to realize this isn't a game you have a young quarterback that's going on the road in the Big Ten for the first time you have a defense that's still trying to figure out how to create pressure 
after losing two first round guys last year. Secondary's pretty good. They did give up some stuff, but they they didn't give up any huge plays, which kept us a slight distance for most of the game. But yeah, it was it was a it was a close one for a lot of the game. Even when Talia Tungavaloa got knocked out in the fourth, the backup Billy Edwards came in, converted like two fourth downs, a third down, and still scored. And they went for an onside kick to try and keep the game going. But yeah, I'm I'm just happy they won. There's a lot of more stuff they have to work on. There's growing pains with JJ and parts of the defense, which should have been expected with them not playing anybody the first three weeks. This Iowa game is going to tell a lot. It's not a night game, so I don't. I'm not going to chuck it up as a loss. It's a noon game, but it'll still be tough. Iowa has a really good defense. Their offense is god awful. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you score 14 to 17, you most likely win. Can't make many mistakes. JJ, you have to hold on to the ball when you run. Can't scramble around for like 10 plus seconds and not throw the ball out. This is a game where he has to show some maturity quickly. Mm-hmm. He can do it. He might not. Iowa might force some turnovers. Both sides are possible. I hope he does it. I hope they can get the run game going with Iowa's tough defense. I was going to say, Iowa might be able to hone in on Blake Quorum. Yeah, they'll, they'll have to get creative with their runs. Yeah. And... um. I don't trust Iowa's offense one bit, so I'm not afraid on that side fully. Even if they don't get a ton of pressure on Spencer Petrus, they haven't shown they have any bit of a consistent pass game. And our secondary has been pretty good so far. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. If you can hold Iowa's run game to being average or below average, they shouldn't score more than three to maybe seven if they get a touchdown. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, just a growing team. Yeah, and then the next test they'll have is basically Penn State. So, Iowa, another good tester, at least uh, for their offense, I would say. Um, So, we'll wait and see what happens with that one. But, so far, Michigan Michigan State going in opposite directions right now in the season. All righty. The NFL. Things are getting a little interesting. It's been a little More than a little. I don't know why I said a little. Yeah. Things are out of control. I mean, everybody's (laughs) top team lost this past weekend basically uh the buffalo bills were knocked off by the dolphins in a wild game um yeah did you see the video of ken dorsey going absolutely nuts in the booth after yeah and then i they, don't think i've ever seen a coordinator lose his mind i would like assume the their stats guy uh covering his, the camera <laughs> he yeah uh, that was something else um the whole like tua coming back into the game people thinking he was Got, had a concussion, but letting him back in and yeah, they they said he had a back injury. Yeah, but it, yeah, they're that's whole weird. It's just yeah, just an odd scenario. Um, so picks were a little wild last week, but uh, we did okay. Malik got eight right, I believe I got six. The total standings, I am at twenty two. Malik is at twenty, so you know he's closed the gap from week one just a little bit. I, I was too cocky during week one. I've seen the error in my ways. <laughs> I'm I'm just I'm here just I'm I'm doing what I can now. I'm making yeah. picks. And I have to start going back to to safe picks. I can't be picking the Jets and the Lions in the same oh, week. Oh, you still can. No, I can't. <laughs> can't. You can. I can't. You can this week. Um listen. Well, I, can we can we do a rare thing to start these picks? What? What do you want to do? Let's both pick the Lions right now. They're beating the Seahawks. Well, we I'm, just just let's just mark this down as a Lions win. Okay, because I haven't said it yet, but if the Lions lose this week, their season's over. It's code red again, and it's not even <laughs> close. Um, yeah, let's get the Lions talk out of the way. So the Lions lost to the Minnesota Vikings, twenty four twenty eight, in a heartbreaking defeat. Once again, the Lions got up early. We're looking. They looked really like they good. were going to dominate the game. That first half, they were really in control. Jeffrey Okuda stopping Justin Jefferson. To only three catches. The hype on him is getting to he, be a little too much, but yeah, he's looking I, good. I think they're scheming up well um, against number one receivers. It looks that way. But Okuda might be playing better. Like he's he's looked better in the little glimpses that I've seen. I haven't. I'm not sitting back and watching all his tape or anything like that. But he has looked better. He looks overall. confident. Yeah, which is the most important thing. So that's a good sign. But then, of course, in Lions fashion, make a couple mistakes. I mean, you can't even count it like that they missed a field goal early because Greg Joseph also missed two 50 bombers uh, for the Vikings. So there's a lot of missed field goals in this game. But 
man, there was some interesting uh, calls in the fourth quarter with Dan Campbell, like going for it on fourth down. I mean, they they went for it a lot on fourth down on get oh on that game, and they were successful. I think five of seven. They started the game wasn't I think it was like three of three from fourth down on the first yeah. like three drives, and then they finished like five of seven or something. Um, but there was one late where they went for it with Jamal Williams. Um, there was also a decision to that they didn't punt at, towards the end of the game. Gave Minnesota pretty good uh, field position. And then, like, to lose the game was basically a missed assignment on K.J. Osborne, wide open in the back of the end zone. I don't know. It, it was rough. It was disappointing. It just stunk. Because the Lions, again, looked good. Um, and now they got to go play Seattle. DeAndre Swift is going to probably be out, but Jamal Williams is one of the best backups in the business. Um, their offensive line is healthy, so like I said, if they if they lose to Seattle, I, I don't know where you can go from there because that's a bad loss. Seattle looks okay at times, but that's a good benchmark. Like you should be able to just beat that team. Yeah. So. I don't know. I'm a little bit nervous, but yes, I, I, I will pick the Lions. Hoping for the best. Uh, so, Thursday night football. This is a good one. We got the 3-0 and Miami Dolphins taking on the 1-2 and Cincinnati Bengals in their new, I don't even know what they're calling them, their white uniforms. I like them. All white. I see white. I think it looks cool. Um... It's in, is it in Cincinnati? Yes. Okay. Yes, it is. Were you waiting yeah. for me to say, can I pick first? I don't know. <laughs> I'll pick first. Okay. The Cincinnati, the Cincinnati, the Bengals got their get right game last year. Nice game beating the Jets. They look comfortable. They look confident. And um, I don't trust Zach Taylor as much as I did last year. But. I think they win another game. I think Joe Burrow is getting back on track. I think Tyler Boyd is going to step up with T. Higgins being out. Is play. he actually going to be out? I thought he was out. I, 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 I don't, I don't know it. if it's confirmed yet, but. but. They used Tyler Boyd a lot last week, and yeah. he's he's dependable as ever, and because, which I, I don't understand why they don't use and him. And because of it's, it being a short week, he, he, he could be out. I just haven't. I haven't heard the reports or anything like that. I just know. Injury report. It, yeah, it doesn't say anything about T. Higgins. Because huh? he was dealing with a toe injury. Um, but who knows if it was, he's actually going to play or not. I, I don't know if it's confirmed yet. We'll probably find out tomorrow, of course. So. Yeah, but I'm, I'm going with Cincinnati. I think they get back on track. Darn, that was my <laughs> I wanted to. I, I was thinking Cincinnati for a lot of the same reasons. I think. You can still pick them. I know, but this is this is one of those games where it's like it's 50-50 that it could be uh the, the season has been weird so far. It's a close game. Um so I'll go with the Dolphins to make uh Thursday night enjoyable. Um I do think the Dolphins are are real deal. I think their defense has been underrated for a while now and they made a lot of sneaky pickups in the offseason getting like Melvin Ingram and things like that. Um and they got Xavier Howard. He's probably going to lock uh, Jamar Chase. He was listed as questionable. Is he? Okay. Um, so, maybe. If he doesn't play, that'll be tough. But the Bengals have struggled. I mean, Miami's getting good pressure on the quarterback. We even saw Josh Allen struggle a little bit at times, yeah. um, as much as Josh Allen can struggle. But we know Cincinnati's offensive line has been terrible. Joe Burrow's been in a lot of trouble at times already this season. So, I think they can get pressure defensively. And I don't think that Cincinnati's secondary is good enough to stop Jalen Waddle or Tyree Kill. Um, Eli so. Apple is going to get targeted. Oh yeah, I know that easily. <laughs> but the I I I trust the Bengal safeties. They'll probably get hit on a few deep balls, mm -hmm. but I trust them to play well enough. Yeah, to not get destroyed back there. I do hope this is kind of like a true shootout, like. Jamar Chase gets a big catch. Tyreek Hill gets a big catch. Jalen Waddle gets a big one. Like it, it could be fun. Yeah. Uh, all right. The no home team London 930 AM game. Minnesota at New Orleans in London. Um, 
both these teams are weird. Justin Jefferson has struggled the last two weeks. Uh, New Orleans, like, their offense looks decent, but, like, they're not scoring. It's just weird. I'm taking Minnesota. Okay. I'm starting to get back on the no faith Jameis thing. I was all bought into the story of the return, but man, he just, he goes full Jameis too much for my liking. Yeah. And I'm sure the Saints are getting a little annoyed with it too. Mm -hmm. It might be just the overall offense as a whole too. Chris Olave started getting going last week, but outside of him, what else did they really get going? Yeah. Uh, Yeah. I'm going Minnesota. Uh, I think that they have some momentum off of that win last week. I'll go with New Orleans then. I think this is a close enough matchup. Um, I think New Orleans has to figure out how to get Kamara back involved in the offense. Yeah, they rushed him a lot, uh, but the connection with Jameis just wasn't there. They targeted him seven times. He only caught it twice. I think they got to figure that out. Um, Michael Thomas is still kind of on the mend, but like you said, Chris Olave is getting that connection with Jameis, I think. And I feel like New Orleans defense has got to step up at some time. And I think... I mean, it's another game where Justin Jefferson might struggle with Marshawn Lattimore and things like that. So I'm banking on the New Orleans defense. They haven't been there necessarily. Like they, they lost to Carolina last week, so I don't fully trust it, but I think it's close enough, and this could be one of those, like, Kirk Cousins has a great game, and then he has a bad game, and then he has a good game, and then he has a bad game. Just going with the ebbs and the flows. Uh, so I'll go with New Orleans. Cleveland at Atlanta. This is an interesting one. Cleveland surprised me last Thursday. With their offense. Jacoby had a clean game. He looked pretty Mark good. Mark Cooper. Yeah. They're, they're figuring things out, which I'm kind of surprised by. We figured their defense would at least keep them in a lot of games. So I, I figured their offense would be at least decent. Yeah. Because Jacoby isn't going to make a ton of mistakes. Yeah. And then Atlanta. They're kind of fun. They're a weird team, too. Because there's times where they just look bad. And then all of a sudden, like, Cordero Patterson gets a big run or. Mariota actually makes a big play. How about Cordero just becoming like a one of the best running backs in the league? I don't get after it. After like seven, eight years. Yeah. He's, he's just that good of an athlete. He's way past the, the running back average age at this point. He's averaging like over six yards a carry. Yeah. <laughs> um, They finally got Kyle Pitts going a little bit last week. Just and Drake a little London bit. looked good too. Drake London still looks good. I don't know. I don't know where to go with this one. Upset. Upset. Take the upset. I'm going Take with Cleveland. The, okay. <laughs> Safe Joey. I just think their Cleveland's running game is so hard to stop, and I don't think Atlanta has a defense to stop it. So I think that Cleveland can slow down the game and get a win. I agree with you 100%. I want to take the Falcons in this just because – I, I love the mix of Mariota, Cordero, and just like misfits and young guys. Hodge, yeah, yeah I, it's it's such a weird collage that works like one play and then doesn't the next. But yeah, Cleveland, I I trust their run game too much. Jacoby has really good chemistry with Amari so far, mm-hmm. and yeah, I just I like them overall. Washington at Dallas. Washington started off the season people thinking they looked pretty good. They've looked pretty bad the last couple weeks. Uh, Carson, Carson Wentz has actually been statistically like one of the better quarterbacks, which is wild. Until last week when he got sacked nine times. Not his was that, fault. I was, yeah, I was about to say. <laughs> at, he, he did struggle a little bit yeah. until late in the game when the defense is softened The up. Eagles just destroyed them. Um, and then Dallas is – they're a weird team. Too. They're another one of those weird teams. Like, Cooper Rush is playing all right. C.D. Lamb finally had a decent game. That drop he had in the first – he either makes a big play or he does nothing. Yeah. I don't. I wonder how much long they can really depend on that. Mm-hmm. The run game got going. That yeah. was good for them. Um, what was I thinking of? Oh, um, wow. Why am I drawing? You're thinking of a player? Or? Yes. Uh, Lawrence got hurt on Monday night, didn't he? Which Lawrence are you talking? For Dallas. About? Oh, Demarcus. Lee? He Demarcus. Lee? I don't remember him getting hurt. I. I thought I saw. I him just on remember him having like a great game. Yeah. Honestly, I don't remember him getting hurt. I maybe I'm wrong. I'll, I'll look it up in a minute. Well, I I have it pulled up right here. I can check. Okay. Uh, Demarcus Lawrence. He's not listed. Okay. Yeah. Maybe I'm seeing ghosts. <laughs> um, I'm gonna go with Dallas. 
as much as I think the Commanders are going to have a bounce back game at some point, and I'm kind of nervous about it, um, my feeling is that it might be the first game that Brian Robinson comes back. And this Dallas defense is so oddly good. I can't, I can't figure they, it out. They have like four or five, honestly, like four players yeah. that are just stand out really good mm-hmm. to almost generational. Micah Parsons, he's, he looks like he's going to be one of the greatest. Yeah. It's, it's, it's insane. He, and Diggs has those moments where he stands out. And I almost feel like Trayvon Diggs like works with that team because they put so much pressure on quarterbacks. Like we saw it, Daniel Jones was the most pressured quarterback. They pressured him 24 times, which is the most since 2009 yeah. that any quarterback has been pressured. Um, that like Trayvon Diggs can take those risks that he takes that gets him so many interceptions. Um, yes, he gets burned every once in a while. Um, so he might get burned by Terry McLaurin this week, but he might come up with a couple interceptions because of Carson Wentz. So I'm going to bank on the Dallas defense, I think, in this one. And I think Dallas has figured out their running game, and Washington just can't stop the run. They've, they've struggled with that so far, and Tony Pollard looks great. Zeke actually looks uh, pretty good. Not like old Zeke, but he looks looks decently good. So, yeah, I'll go with Dallas. I'm going to take a weird, unnecessary chance with this. And I'm going by the principle of Dallas going Dallas, doing what the Cowboys do. And I, I, I don't know. <laughs> That's just, fair. Just, just Dallas, just the Cowboys doing Cowboys things. How many more games can Cooper Rush play like mostly clean football? Yeah. Eventually, Zeke is going to start complaining about something. Can CD finally break out? Like there, there are still so many questions about that offense to me. I'm ready for Dallas to win like one or two more games, so they get a lot of hype. So they're like four and one, five okay. and one. That's that's the best. And then they just fall apart. <laughs> that's that's what I'm hoping yeah. for. You almost make me want Deep to switch down. sides for that. But I'm I'm going to stay on Washington. I'm just gonna I'm gonna say Carson Wentz outplays Cooper Rush. He hits some big plays, and they win a game like 27 to 20 yeah. or something like that. Washington wins. Tennessee at Indianapolis. I'm not. This isn't a fun game. Another weird one. This is not fun. <laughs> no. Derrick Henry versus Jonathan Taylor. It should be fun. Yeah. It should be. But both these teams. Indianapolis got a win over Kansas City. I didn't see that coming. And, you know, Tennessee, they beat Vegas, but everybody's beating Vegas, so. Big whoop. Yeah. This... Uh, you go ahead and pick first. You want first. me to pick first? <laughs> yes. All right. I'm going to go with... Uh... Do either of these teams actually have any momentum? Tennessee. <laughs> it's a coin flip. You flipped the coin. Uh, I'm going with Tennessee. I don't know. I think Ryan Tannehill is just maybe a, a slightly better quarterback than Matt Ryan at this point. Um, I don't know. Listen, I, Matt, I feel like Tennessee... Matt Ryan is... looks so cooked. For like half of a game. Yeah. And then he has like two drives that get them in. Mm-hmm. I'm just going to go out the, out the opposite side and say Colts. It's fair. Like maybe Jonathan Taylor explodes for one finally. Matt Ryan just plays a clean, safe game. Mm-hmm. Who knows, man? Yeah. I it's, don't like either of these Yeah, teams. it's a weird game for sure. Uh, another weird one. Another not liking really either team. Chicago and the Giants. At the Giants. Give me give me New York. <laughs> I'm right with you. Did you see that Chicago offense? Yeah. Besides Herbert, hey, yeah, there's he looked good last. There's year, some though, weird too. ominous reason David Montgomery isn't playing. Mm-hmm. I I think they said he's hurt, but also I I don't know. Yeah, but Khalil Herbert looked pretty good. Justin we, Fields, we won't we won't speak about that. Every uh, the other parts of that offense. Justin Fields going backwards. We, who, uh, is I it, do believe Cole Komet had a catch though this week. Good for Cole. And Darnell Mooney was actually targeted six times. I saw Equinamia St. Brown had a nice reverse run. Yep. Yep. And that was your Bears offense minute. You know, the, Less than a minute. there's only two players in the league that have a 30-plus yard catch and a 30-plus yard run. You want to know who those players are? Who? Equinamia St. Brown and Amon Ra St. Brown. <laughs> that is incredible. I think the Detroit Lions Facebook put that out yesterday. That's pretty funny. They... Both scored a touchdown in week one, like, moments after each other, and now they're 
the only two players with thirty a thirty plus yard catch and a thirty plus yard run. If one of the young receivers doesn't work out for Detroit, just trade for Equinemius. Yeah, just just do it for the memes. Mm-hmm. Do it for the St. Brown family. I'm down. But yeah, are we both going Giants? Yes. Yes, I, I think the Giants are actually okay. I, I think they look good in spots. Daniel um, Jones needs weapons. Yeah, I don't think we'll ever see what he could be, even though he's Daniel Jones. I don't think we'll ever see what his best version could be. Because he looks good. There's him. times where he like shows shades of being good. Yeah. So, yeah, not sure. Uh, Jacksonville at Philadelphia. Philadelphia, the hotness right now. This is a lot more interesting than it was a week ago. And Jacksonville just beat the brakes off of the Chargers. Like, it was not even close. Trevor Lawrence gave it to him. And James Robinson. James, Rob- James Robinson who, looks real healthy. Urban, Urban Meyer. It's a bad look. He just it's did, a bad look. He just decided we're not going to play J- uh, uh, Urban man. Yeah. It's a bad it's a bad look. But hey, you know, Doug Peterson's doing a great job. I guess he's he sacrificed himself for what the Jags are about to become, I guess. I'm yeah. just kidding. Don't give him credit. It's all it's Doug Peterson. And I mean, Jacksonville's getting, you know, everybody thought they were crazy for paying Zay Jones and Christian Kirk in the offseason, but they're looking good. So, can't fault it. Um but man, I I cannot pick Jacksonville in this game. Philadelphia is looking too good. Just too good. Their offense is smooth. Their defense is great. They just walked over Washington last week. Yeah. Like the Devontae line- Smith, him and A.J. Brown. Uh, yeah. They they both have moments where they look like top five receivers. Mm-hmm. It's it's ridiculous. Yeah. And Dallas Goddard looks like he's a consistent like safety yeah. blanket. Yeah, and then they just run the ball better than any other team. So, yeah, I, I think it could be a close game. I just think Philadelphia is just in that groove right now. But yeah, I'm going for going too. Up. Okay. Yeah. Watch this be the weird one where Jackson. It could be. Oh, could we're, be. we're going Philly. Uh, the Jets at the Steelers. It's a pretty rough game. Um. The Steelers' play calling is awful on offense. Zach Wilson will be back for this game. So, he's going to play. No more Joe Flacco. I'd like to say that's a problem for the Jets. I said it before. Uh, I mean, at least in the short term. Let it go, Joey. In the Please, short term, let it go. In the short term, it will be rough. Listen, you're wearing a green shirt right now. I understand you have to ride. Well, we, we won't bring that up again. Yeah, we But, yeah, let's just just let the Flacco thing go. He had his moments. MVP. Anyway. Steelers, just just because of you doing this bit for the people. Well, and I have to go to the Steelers, too, because Joe Flacco's not playing. So (laughs) You you should have picked the Jets for Chris or something. Uh, I would like the Steelers, though, to uh, highly consider playing Kenny Pickett. I am on that board now. I know Trubisky Uh, looked decent last week, but... Do you do you throw Pickett into that mess of an offense right now? Yes, it's already a mess. Who cares? You, you don't want to ruin him. I, what's it going to ruin? Don't ruin him. Like we we've seen young quarterbacks get thrown into bad offenses. Put him in high pressure situation right. right away. Just let him let him see what happens. I, I, I you know what? Actually, I wouldn't. Yeah, I wouldn't mind seeing Kenny Pickett. You know what you're getting out of Mitch? Yeah, even the best of them. That's my feeling. So I don't know. All righty. Buffalo at Baltimore. That's a fun game. Uh, Buffalo just coming off their first loss. And then Lamar Jackson. MVP two? He's Maybe. Just, right now, he's easily on pace for it. Um, he's had back-to-back 100-yard rushing games. Um, and he's passed for over 200 both games, too. Yeah. And uh, he leads the league in touchdowns right now. And he's just being very efficient, and it looks good. And J.K. Dobbins is slowly getting healthier. We saw him come back last week. Hopefully they increase his workload this week, and then maybe he'll be to a full workload uh, the following week. Uh, But it's kind of a wait and see. Um, Two of my favorite teams playing each other right now. Um, But I'm going to assume, because the Baltimore defense has struggled recently, which I can't believe that, the secondary that they have is struggling like this, but they are. Um, and I'm just going to go with Baltimore because I believe you're going to go with the Bills. 
And I think Lamar Jackson might actually cause problems for the Bills. I guess I'm becoming very predictable because, yes, I am going to go with the Bills. They lost a weird one to Miami last week. And they're going to be mad. That's what I'm yes, scared they are. of. And I'm not going to assume the Ravens just, like, give up another insane lead like they did against Miami. Mm-hmm. But I think Buffalo stays with them the whole game. And they almost did against New England. And Baltimore's offense even has shown a few cracks mm-hmm. that they could lose some rhythm at some points. And when they lose rhythm, I think Buffalo will just jump right on them. Could be a close game in the end. Mm -hmm. Could be something in the 30s. But I think Buffalo wins. Fair enough. Chargers at the Texans. This is more interesting than I thought it would be last week. The, The Chargers, they just can't get, like, teams get lucky breaks every year. Mm-hmm. And the Chargers, I don't think I've ever seen them get a lucky break. Yeah. And this is just a continuation of just bad luck. Joey Bosa out. I think Keenan Allen's back for this game. Has he played yet this season? Uh, week one for yeah. a half. He was hurt in the first half. Is Herbert going to be healthy? I think he looked all right last week. He did. But, but yeah. They're, they were just, I don't know. They didn't look good coming from behind, that's for sure. So, Austin Eckler hasn't really done as much on the ground as he did last year. Now, he's not really known for being like a 100-yard rusher every game or anything like that, but he's really struggled this year. And I, I, 32 carries, 80 yards. Granted, part of it, their offensive line has been banged up uh, most of the season. Like we uh, we talked about before, that Rashawn Slater, we're not really sure if he's out for the season or not, but he had a pretty significant injury. And then uh, I believe their center is Corey Lindsley, something like that. Uh, their center, he was out last game or something like that. So their offensive line is depleted, so that might be in, in part of it. But I'm not picking this upset. I'm going to the chart. I can't I can't pick Lovey and the Texans. I'm sorry. I was just about I to ask you, it. can you really pick Davis Mills? I'm like, I can pick Davis Mills. I can't pick Lovey. He hasn't looked very good, though, this year. Uh, Davis Mills is kind of struggling a little bit, but – I think he's also played some quality defenses. Arizona at Carolina. QBR is 30th. Yeah. 27 QBR. <laughs> Moving on. Cardinals, Panthers. Who? You don't, do you trust anybody in this no. game? No. <laughs> no. You don't trust the coaches? Maybe Christian McCaffrey. Uh, you trust Kyler? Maybe. You do you trust Kyler more than Baker? Yes. But how much do you trust Kyler? I don't know. I trust, and then I trust the Panthers' defense more than I trust the Cardinals' defense. Is I don't, I don't trust Arizona to come out looking good in this. I really don't. <laughs> uh, am I gonna do this? I got my coin flip. Carolina has their best offensive game. <laughs> Panthers win. All right, easy one for me to go Arizona then. I really hope this is the one where it just flips in my favor. It might be. It it might be. Um two these are two weird teams. I don't I don't know. Uh New England at Green Bay. You're not picking New England. Mac right? Jones is out. Yeah. <laughs> Bring in Bailey Zappi. I agree. This this doesn't need to be the Brian Hoyer game. Did He's you, had his time. Did you know Brian Hoyer's real name is Axel? His first name? Yes. Apparently. That's what uh, I was told watching ESPN. Um, I believe it was Field Yates. They were talking on fantasy football um, that somebody they were interviewing somebody from New England and they asked about what they were going to do moving forward. And then somebody had said something about, "Well, Axel's going to play well for us" or something. And nobody knew who they were talking about. Supposedly, it's Brian Hort. The quarterback was born Axel Edward Brian Hoyer. There it is. Yep, it's confirmed. Packers by 40. (laughs) Put in Bailey Zappi. What are we doing? Put in Bailey Zappi. Brian Hoyer hasn't won a game in 11 games that he started. Ever since that Texans playoff game where he couldn't throw a rock into the ocean, Mm -hmm. I've been done with Brian Hoyer. He had that one season in Cleveland where it was like, oh, Brian Hoyer. That was it. And think about it. Who are the New England receivers? Devontae Parker. Kind of a deep ball guy. 
Nelson Aguilar, kind of a deep ball guy. What did Bailey Zappi do in college? Kind of a deep ball guy. Just saying. Yes, Green Bay. Easy. All right, here. This might be the weirdest game of the weekend. Denver and whatever they're doing the over 0-3 there. The 0-3 Raiders versus the 0-3 Broncos. <laughs> hey, they won last week. No, they didn't. 11 to they 10. They haven't won. They haven't won anything. <laughs> 11 to 10 win over They have over nothing San to Francisco. be proud of. Give me. This game is. Give me the Raiders. This game is so weird. Give me Vegas. I'm taking Vegas too. Um, Denver, <laughs> what are you doing? They're so weird to watch. Like, I do not understand. They're awful to watch. Their punter was the best part of their game. Yeah. That was the best part. Uh, Vegas, and I, I just, can't stand for that. Vegas, I feel like they just have to figure, like, Josh McDaniels has to figure something out. Like, they look decent at times, and then they just kind of falter. Then they start looking like they're pressing. Yeah. Also, Darren Waller doesn't look like himself. Mm-hmm. I mean, Matt Collins led the team last week in, in catches and yards. Which was cool for Matt Collins, but, yeah. But weird when you have Devontae Adams. Um, yeah, I'm going to Vegas, too. I think they got to get their first win. They were a playoff team last year. I, I don't understand it. Uh, Kansas City at Tampa Bay. Here we go. Sunday night football. That's a good one. Um, Tampa Bay, they've been kind of squeaking they along. They haven't looked that good. No, but they, we're being honest. they still have a lot their of injuries. Is, yeah, true. Uh, their defense is holding them down. Uh, but even with the injuries, uh, the Mike Evans suspension. So Mike Evans will be, up, be back for this game. Um, Kansas City, they lost last week to the Colts somehow. I, I can't explain what happened in that game. I really can't. No. But their defenses looked pretty good as well. Uh, I mean, the GOAT. Versus Patrick Mahomes, who might be the next guy. I don't know. Um, mm. I'll pick first. Because it seems like you're thinking about a lot of things. Well, you picked Carolina first last time, so I I, I can take the reins on okay. this one. If you're thinking to go opposite. Mm. I'm going to go Tom Brady. And that's really okay. out of my nature to pick the Bucks. I think any other time I would pick Kansas City. But I think with Mike Evans coming back, there's got to be a game where Tom Brady is going to just get angry and go ballistic. I don't know if it's this game, but I think we might see a, a peak of it this game. So, going with the Bucks. And I was going to pick the Chiefs. Okay. Works out. I think Pat Mahomes gets back on track. It seemed like him and Eric B. Enemy were kind of getting into it. Nothing too crazy, but they had some disagreements on the sidelines. I'm not sure what, what they were exactly. Mm-hmm. But Pat Mahomes never has more than, like, a game or two in a row where he looks kind of out of sorts. Yeah. And the offense is completely off. Mm-hmm. So I'm, I'm going to go with the Chiefs. And then our Monday night matchup. The L.A. Rams taking on the San Francisco 49ers. Rams. You're not taking the 49ers. I won't allow it. They just lost to Denver. They did. I, I'm just, I'm yeah. <laughs> Rams. I'm just prolonging it for some reason. I think San Francisco may get there towards the middle of the season, but not, re- not right now. I thought Jimmy G was going to look a little better. Um, but not yet. Okay, so that's our uh, week four picks. We're already on to week four. Kind of crazy. We have a couple minutes left. I do want to mention the one NBA rumor that I did hear kind of swirling around recently since we got time. Supposedly, there's a situation in OKC with uh, Shea Gilgis Alexander. Do I know what that situation is? No. Uh, But apparently, Toronto is monitoring the situation. Him going back to Canada would be awesome, but I, it would also be sad if he left OKC. Yeah. But they're, they're building a full young core off of the last three drafts. Yeah. So I think OKC is kind of in the uh, – maybe a step behind the Pistons. And they, they said they want to try and, like, they want to see if they can get close to the play-in spot. Yeah. Oh, speaking of the Pistons, we haven't mentioned 
They made a trade recently. So the Thank Pistons you, traded with the Utah yeah. Jazz and got Bojan Bogdanovich. What a fantastic move. Now, they did get rid of Kelly Olenek. And, and your boy. It was hey, so God. sad to see him go. Listen, pour one out for your boy, Saban. Saban Lee. Not, not, not Nick. Not who we're talking about. Saban Lee. Saban Lee. And Kelly Olenek. Kelly Olenek, don't really care about. Saban Lee, <laughs> man, you deserved better. You deserve Number better. 38. So hopefully hopefully he'll find some time in Utah. Uh, I would love to see him play, um, get some more time. But um, that's a wait and see. Uh, but we got Bojan Bogdanovic. I don't know where he's going to play. Like, if he's going to be in the starting lineup or I off think, the bench. I think he starts. He could come off the bench if they want to start Marvin Bagley. Yeah. If you start him at the three or four, he's not defending much of anybody. No. So, it I, just depends on the team and the matchups Yeah, I when think he's out there. The early projections that people have been putting out is that it'd be Jaden Ivey, Cade Cunningham, Sadiq Bey, Boyan, uh, and Beef Stew. Mm-hmm. With... Uh, Marvin coming off the bench with Jalen Duran, uh, Corey Joseph, um, Killian Hayes maybe, and Isaiah Livers, and probably Isaiah Livers, yeah. Um, so yeah, I think it's a great move. Um, just gives another depth piece. I think it's it's mostly like he we got the best player in the trade, even though we traded two guys away. Boyan is a little step above Kelly Olynyk, um, in my opinion. And just gives us another guy that can stretch the floor and yeah. can do some things. And he's a guy that can score. He can give you 20-some a night yeah. uh, if you need he's it. He's a consistent 18, 19 a game if you need him to be. Right. 38% from three for his career. He's what they needed last year. And every time their offense went dry for long periods of time and nobody could hit a shot because they had no consistent three-point shooters, the nights where Rodney Magruder would have to be the guy to heat up. Yeah. You won't need those much anymore because Boyan is consistent. Mm-hmm. He can knock down shots when guys are out, and you need somebody to pick the team up. Yeah. Oh, the other one I forgot about, um, of course, is Alec, Alec Burks. Yeah, I forget. Yeah, I forgot about him too. So Nerlens Noel is going to get a little bit of time too. Yeah. So we do have the uh, Pistons training camp roster as well that I'll go over real quick. Uh, it's Marvin Bagley, Sadiq Bay, Buddy Bayheim. Bojan Bogdanovic, Alec Burks, Cade Cunningham, Hamadou Diallo, Jalen Duran, Kyler Edwards. I forgot about Hamadou Diallo. Yeah. Kyler Edwards, uh, Killian Hayes, Jaden Ivey, Corey Joseph, Braxton Key, Kevin Knox, Isaiah Livers, Rodney Magruder, Nerlens Noel, Isaiah Stewart, Kemba Walker, who's not with the team. Not a listed number. Just Yeah, yeah don't worry about he's it. He's just there. But he's on it. Um, So there's going to be some interesting cuts this year. I think for the Pistons, like they're they're actually probably going to have a tough time, in my opinion, because they got to de- they got to figure out what they want to do with uh, Diallo. Uh, guys like Rodney Magruder probably be on the bubble as well. Goodbye, Rodney. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, Jules Bernard. Please get him off of the roster. Get get him. Send him somewhere. <laughs> Not a fan of Jules Bernard. Yeah, fair enough. Braxton Key even. Kevin Knox, like I, those. I expect, Ke- Ke- I expect Braxton to stay. I don't think he, Kevin Knox stays over him, honestly. Yeah. And unfortunately, Buddy Bayheim, it's probably going to be rough. But G League, sniper. But I can be hopeful. G League sniper, maybe. So yeah, Pistons, getting there. Was Balsa Capravita listed on there? No. Wow. Yeah. Disappointing. Listen, I knew a few people. But he is. He was signed two way, right? Was he one of remember. those guys? I don't remember. I know a few people that predicted Balsa would end up being like a super breakout eventually. I I still think there's hope. I still, he has I still talent. think there's hope. He's, He's shown just, some yeah. signs last he, year. He moves like a seven footer. Yeah. And not in like the like today's version of seven footers. Yeah. All right. Well, that has been views from the sidelines. We will see you next time, which will be in October. Crazy. Um, but we're getting closer and closer to the NBA season. So, uh, yeah, next week we'll go back over uh, more Michigan, Michigan State news, uh, our week four picks, and see where we're at and going into week five. See you next time. If Michigan State and the Lions lose this weekend, what will, what will be the attitude coming into this weekend? No emotion. I think there will be some sadness. <laughs>